Good morning and welcome. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As you've noticed, the colors in front have brightened to red as today we celebrate the festival of the first Christian Pentecost and the fulfillment of Jesus' promise to send the Holy Spirit to fill the hearts of the believers, to empower us for our lives of witness, to come alongside us through every change and challenge of this earthly life, and to enable us to be witnesses for Jesus wherever we are, with whomever we are with, whatever we are doing, that God is alive and well and at work in us and through us for our good and his glory. May God strengthen us through the hearing of his word this day and empower us for our lives of witness to others. Let's begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak responsibly the first portion of Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is the light with you. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and the flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves, and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Epistles from Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues, as a fire appeared to them, and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, in Cappadocia, Pontus, in Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood. Before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they did not do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father. And you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Today is Pentecost Sunday. But what is a Pentecost anyway? Well, Pentecost is the day we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. Let me explain. After Jesus rose from the dead on Easter, he and the disciples walked and talked for seven weeks. They went all over the place. And during that time, Jesus kept telling the disciples that he would be leaving them soon. But the disciples never asked where he was going or why he would be leaving them. Maybe they were a little bit afraid of what they would do without Jesus to lead them. Maybe they were afraid that they would get lost. Jesus told them they wouldn't be alone, though, and that the Spirit of Truth will come to guide them in all truth. The Holy Spirit would act kind of like a map so that they wouldn't get lost. Then Jesus left. But he left behind the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit that'll help keep us on the right track so that the disciples and us will never be lost. So where did Jesus end up going? He went to heaven, of course, and he told the disciples that if they follow him, they too will end up in heaven someday. So even though Jesus left us on earth, he didn't leave us alone. He left the Holy Spirit to guide us and show us the right way so that we too can end up in heaven with him. Let's say a quick prayer. Dearest Heavenly Father, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit down to guide us and to help us walk on a good and righteous path. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
dearly loved and precious children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, can I let you in on a little trade secret when it comes to sermon preparation? No, I'm not going to confess that I get my sermons off the internet. Like all good preachers, I do my own research and I do my own writing. You can count on that. But I will tell you that I will sometimes, when I'm getting ready to preach on a particular Sunday, look back at years past to see which text I chose for that particular Sunday in the past. I do that particularly with festival Sundays, like Easter and Ascension Sunday and Pentecost Sunday, to make sure that I do the well-rounded look at all of Scripture and don't always zero in on the same text and the same message. So looking back in preparation for today, our celebration of Pentecost, I discovered that seven of the last seven years on the day of Pentecost, I have chosen to preach on Acts chapter 2. I guess that makes sense because Acts chapter 2 is the account of the first Christian Pentecost. And looking over each of those sermons, I saw that each of them were a completely different message on a different perspective and dimension of the text from Acts 2. It is in Acts 2 that we read about the sound like a mighty rushing wind, the tongues as of fire that came to rest on the heads of the disciples, and the good news of the gospel that was proclaimed to God's people in many different languages. By all accounts, it was a spectacular display of the outpouring of God's Spirit on the church, just as Jesus had promised. Acts 2 is worth looking at again and again, year after year. I decided to take a different perspective this year. I looked at the Old Testament lesson appointed for today from Ezekiel 37. I noticed that I preached on Ezekiel's vision of the Valley of Dry Bones before. So I thought it's high time to look at our gospel lesson appointed for Pentecost Sunday, or at least the first part of it from the end of John chapter 15. John 15 is familiar enough to us this year because two of our gospel lessons from the last three Sundays have been from John 15. And you may remember that we looked at Jesus' words one Sunday where he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Sunday after that, we looked at Jesus' words, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Today we come to the very end of John 15, and we hear a promise of Jesus, which pointed forward to the day of Pentecost when this promise was fulfilled. Jesus declared, when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Jesus was talking about his promise to send the Holy Spirit, the Spirit who would bear witness to Jesus, 
The Spirit bears witness to the sacrificial death of Christ on the cross for the sins of all the world. And Jesus' glorious resurrection from the dead on the third day to give life in his name by God's grace to all who believe in Jesus. Jesus promised to send the Helper, the Holy Spirit. In a way, I feel like that English word helper hardly does justice to the full meaning of the original word in the text. It's always a challenge of translation to find that single English word which will adequately communicate the depth and the breadth of the meaning of the original word in Greek. The Greek word here is parakletos. It's actually a combination of two words, meaning one who comes alongside. And in the Greek, it means one who appears on another's behalf, a mediator, an intercessor, and therefore one who is the greatest kind of helper, one who brings wisdom and truth and counsel and support to help in a particular and in any time of need. Jesus promised to send the ultimate helper, the spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father to come alongside his disciples. Jesus said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. The spirit of truth bears witness to Jesus and guides us into the truth about Jesus his life under the law in our place, his death on our behalf, his resurrection to give us life forever. The Spirit does this for us and alongside us and in us by God's word so that, as Jesus said, you also will bear witness to Jesus. The first disciples of Jesus did bear witness through their preaching and their teaching and some through their writing of the gospel accounts and their letters to the first Christian churches, the writings of which comprise our New Testament scriptures. But the good news is that the divine helper the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father and who is sent by Jesus to come alongside us comes alongside also us today and empowers us for our lives of witness. You also will bear witness, Jesus said, certainly to his own disciples, but to his followers, to his disciples, down through the ages and across cultures. You also will bear witness, and you do, by the things you say, by the things you do, by the life you live. You bear witness by being you, a child of God, washed, sanctified, rescued, redeemed, restored, and renewed, and empowered by God's Spirit to shine as a light of Christ in the darkness of this fallen world of sin and shame. You do bear witness by bearing the image of Christ placed upon you in the waters of baptism, fed and nourished through God's word and sacraments. As the Spirit, the divine helper, comes alongside you in whatever situation you find yourself, in and among whomever people you may be with, and guiding you and empowering you to speak the words of God, to shine the light of Christ, 
to be the child of God in the world that he has created and redeemed and empowers you to be, you also will bear witness, and you do. May God so strengthen your faith and give you joy and help you see and embrace the opportunities where he places you to bear witness to Jesus in the world around us, to the glory of God and the salvation of many precious souls. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. Spread the rain of God the Lord, spoken, written, mighty word. Everywhere his creatures call to his heavenly banquet hall. Tell how God the Father's will made the world upholds it still. Tell of our Redeemer's grace, who to save our human race, and to pay rebellion's price, gave himself a sacrifice. Tell of God the Spirit give, now to guide us on to heaven, strong and holy, just and Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, your spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Christ Jesus has spoken. Glorify his name among us in every word and deed. Send your Holy Spirit upon your faithful people, that convicted of their sin, they may also be convinced that the righteousness of Christ is theirs by your grace through faith in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your Spirit you have established your holy church on the proclamation of Christ, our Savior. Sustain the apostolic message to the ends of the earth, that in every tongue the mighty works of God in Christ may be heard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, give hope to your people in the midst of this world of death and despair. Put your spirit within us to believe, to live, and to serve according to your promises and commands. Enlighten our hearts so that through every trial and temptation, we always abide in the consolation that Christ is Lord over the devil, death, and all things, and that he will graciously deliver us from all affliction to make us partakers of eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son acknowledged Satan as the ruler of this world, 
and its ways. Yet one whose reign is judge and whose time is short beat back his lies and deadly work that the order of your creation may be seen. Give us good government and leaders who are both honest and faithful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we call on your name, O Lord, praying in your spirit to help and to heal all who are suffering in mind, body, or soul, including those in our family of faith. Janella Barnett, who is failing in health, and Mary Beth Bean, Nancy Keith, Justin Poland, and Tom Poole, who are recovering. Grant them healing, peace, and strength according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those mourning the loss of precious loved ones, including the family and friends of Arnold Brillinger, who was summoned to eternal life on Wednesday, May 19th. Bless them, O Lord, with comfort in their grief, peace in your presence, and the sure hope of a glorious reunion in heaven through the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go out into the world and labor to bring forth new life. Dream dreams, pursue visions, and speak of God's goodness in the words of those who would hear. And may the God who breathed the life into creation be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to your dreaming, and may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>